So, ladies and gentlemen, we have discussed uh, many sectors of uh, cultural diplomacy, peace building, avoiding crisis, and, and so on. One important aspect is economy and the social development. Uh, if we think about this country, this uh, Wirtschaftswunder, uh, uh, one wonderful development of the economy after the war was possible because of the martial aid and because of the, there were major changes in the society after the Nazi regime. And this uh, Wirtschaftswunder made it possible to have also steady democracy and uh, uh, developing rule of law and a more equal society for all the people. In other crises also, this economic uh, uh, part of solution has been important. Uh, if we think about uh, such areas like Vietnam after, after the war, uh, the recent uh, rapid development of economy has made it possible to have a much better look at the future for the uh, whole nation. And uh, a bit different kind of uh, approach. Uh, North Korea is very isolated. The only way they have been able to have some kind of uh, support for ordinary North Korean people has been through the giant corporations of South Korea, like uh, Hyundai or Samsung, they have given straight support through different channels to uh, fight hunger and, and social problems in the North Korean society. But I am going to have a few words about this um, special task of the international development banks after the war and, and during the last uh, th three or four decades. They have had a very important task in having a more, more stable development in uh, developing countries, especially in uh, Europe. The European Bank for Reconstruction and Development was uh, built to speed up the transition in, in the new democracies of Eastern and Central, Central Europe uh, towards uh, market economy, democracy, and, and, and uh, better equal society. Uh, now there has been about 20 years uh, discussions uh, what kind of reasons are creating new crises in, in the world in the future. And this uh, uh, environmental problems have been a new cause of uh, unrest also for new kinds of refugee problems, and might be that if this uh, climate change continues, there will be, would be possible to have uh, millions or tens of millions of people who have to move from their uh, lo locations, from their houses. Uh, if you think that, that, that kind of regions like Bangladesh or, or many of the island states, or then uh, drought creates hunger in sub-Saharan regions, Actually, part of the European refugee problems comes already from the climate change that uh, from many African countries, uh, people have been uh, forced to leave because of the hunger and drought problems. Uh, so sustainable development in all of the world is uh, one main factor in avoiding new crises. Uh, Lord McConnell uh, has a presentation on especially this uh, development goals, but I have a few words in the beginning. Uh, now they have uh, been more precise to, uh, according to the new sustainable development goals compared to the old millennium development goals, and especially the fields of environment, sustainable uh, economy, they have been uh, written more detailed, and these uh, arrows show that 
there are about half of them, if we look at the uh, different colors, uh, are very close to, uh, closely uh, in connection with the climate change and how to tackle it, uh, how to combat uh, negative eff effects of uh, climate change. When we come to the concrete measures that uh, financing institutions can use, so they, they are uh, in a development bank that, that kind of uh, funding targets like uh, infrastructure and most a lot of that has to be allocated towards uh, uh, reducing carbon dioxide emissions and, and, and so on to uh, combat the climate change. Of course, transport uh, creating livable conditions in major cities, uh, in favelas and uh, slums to have a uh, possibilities to, to live in a healthy environment. There's a lot to be done, a lot of construction, a lot of more equal development in, uh, also, also social, socially in the, these societies. And uh, water issues are also a very important part of these investments. If uh, the current uh, trend continues, we all know that uh, the, the temperature will rise about four to five degrees. It has already increased about two to three percent in certain areas in the world. For instance, in, in Finland, it's about two degrees during the industrialization period. Some parts in the north and then in, in the south have already experienced this uh, temperature increase. But then we may have another option to uh, reduce those emissions and, and to have more carbon orientated society and the, in the left hand side this blue, blue one trend could be possible to, to have a, a very important impact on, on the development through new kind of policies which have been just settled and negotiated in, in Paris. Uh, there's a description of, of, about the kind of cultural development, political development around these issues. Uh, it was de demanded a lot of uh, public discussions uh, how to create also in the political spheres uh, the demand of new decisions which uh, reduce the negative effects of climate change. And here yeah, on, uh, on the right hand side you have this uh, very negative uh, <clears throat> results if we don't do enough unprecedented heat waves and uh, risk of global mass extinctions, global crop decline, and, and so on. Now no, no, this was stuck. So was the engineer <laughs> to have the rights. Could it be this one now? I don't find the right one now. 
escape. Yeah. This is, uh, yeah. yeah. Or the arrow here. Yeah, probably. That would make. Yeah, thank you. The So what has in our region, EBRD covers the same regions like, like OSCE, the former Soviet Union, and the states of that, and, and then uh, Europe. And now it is also uh, three countries from the Mediterranean, uh, Morocco, Egypt, and Jordania. And Lebanon is just joining. So there is, has already been uh, water scarcity and uh, extreme weather events, flooding. There are some pictures from Serbia and Poland. Just now there are severe bloods also in Great Britain and, and so on. And in the future also, this, uh, many of our regions are very vulnerable. Uh, to this different kind of negative uh, changes of environment. Water supplies, uh, also power generation may be damaged. And uh, this, uh, that poor regions have also poor infrastructure, they make things worse. And uh, if we have, haven't got enough uh, finance, possibilities, the needed infrastructure construction, so that is a major problem. And this is just a question which was also discussed in, in Paris, that the wealthy nations should have about 100 million euros or dollars per year after the year 2020. But before that, we have to do a lot, and these development banks, regional development banks, are a useful tool for that. Uh, there's African Development Bank Europe. In Europe, we have both European Investment Bank and EBRD. And then uh, in Asia, we have uh, the older one, Asian Development Bank, and now uh, the new AIIB, investment, new investment bank with a major uh, fund alloc allocations of China, and then this uh, so-called BRICS bank, new development bank, uh, where China, Russia, Brazil, India, and South Africa are uh, shareholders. Uh, we have to have a lot of more cooperation between these banks and, and between the nations and, and the banks and international investors to have enough uh, actions already during this decade and not just wait after the year 2020. Uh, one thing makes it easier to, to fight climate change. Like in many other fields of technology, uh, the technology becomes cheaper when it's, uh, the demand increases. Uh, there are steep cost decreases in key technologies, bringing wind and solar close to the or below grid parity. Uh, solar panels are cheaper and, and more efficient, effective. And uh, it's also easier to have a, a decentralized uh, energy production. Uh, and uh, also in the water field, there are cheaper ways of uh, cleansing water and, and making sure that water is enough for everybody. Uh, a lot has been done already before. Um, the, like our bank, there's a different uh, kind of activities. Uh, we invest in municipal infrastructure, big, even though the major funding goes to the private companies, there are private energy companies and also some public ones to increase energy efficiency. And then for smaller scale 
investments uh, have uh, special uh, loans through local banks and this kind of financing facilities uh, need to be created in every country to reach these climate uh, policy targets. And the resource efficiency has to, has to be increased in all sectors, in industrial, agriculture and building sectors. And in every development bank, we have to increase the share of, of these investments. So if you look at the uh, figures, so in, in the uh, 10 years ago, it was only 15% to these targets, which was allocated in, in EBRD. Now, in recent years, it has been around 30%. And now, according to our new uh, development target, we have to increase it into uh, 40 million, 40% uh, and the total sum during these last 10 years has been used to about 18 billion uh, euros and uh, quite uh, evenly shared between these different regions of, of our activities. You can see this uh, pink part, Turkey, and now it comes to my mind that uh, maybe you already discussed on, on Friday about this issue that uh, this current refugee crisis is very expensive to handle and uh, now European Union made this decision to uh, uh, grant uh, ten, uh, 3 billion euros to Turkey for because they have this 2.5 million refugees have had already years and also uh, these banks, European Investment Bank and EBRD, try to very rapidly find uh, investment uh, operations uh, for sc schooling, education and, and healthcare hospitals in those regions where you have a lot of these uh, refugee populations in, in, in Turkey and Jordania. Uh, just recently, a couple of weeks ago, there was uh, uh, estimated uh, total expense per year, annual expense for Turkey, for about this uh, uh, 2.5 million refugees. So it was counted at about 7.5 billion uh, dollars. And uh, just in my country, where we have received about 30,000 uh, refugees uh, this year, the, the amount is uh, uh, one billion euros. So uh, if we will share, the, uh, do some counting so, so we can find out that uh, in Turkey it's uh, uh, much cheaper for per refugee. In Finland uh, it uh, costs uh, 15 times more per uh, refugee or refugee family to be, to arrange housing and, and give the support they need to arrange our education and so on. Um, th this is uh, uh, one thing which we have to find out. Maybe there are also differences about this, uh, how possible is, is then coming back to Syria or, or Afghanistan or Iraq uh, after hopefully we will reach peaceful solution in the near future. Uh, but anyhow, we have, shall, must have more solidarity to, to uh, share this uh, burden of, of exp expenses and, and, and it shows that uh, also giving this uh, support to those regions which have uh, got more immigrants and, and refugees so that has to be done and it's uh, often uh, more most efficient than, than transporting refugees for very uh, far destinations. Uh, so we have, uh, during these 20 years, uh, or t uh, rough, roughly 10 years, we have also reached quite a lot, uh, reduced uh, 73 million tons of uh, carbon oxide dioxide per year and uh, 25 million cubic meters of water 
uh, through these efficiency projects. There's a comparison that uh, this uh, saved uh, carbon dioxide equals the, the amount uh, Romania, the whole, whole nation, uh, has annually. And uh, also in waste and, and water investments, they have had very positive results. In these uh, climate change, change investments, we use the same kind of uh, procedures and the same methods that the bank development banks usually have. They, we tr try to have the money back, of course, after the loan period. But uh, in many cases, you have to have some kind of grant money also to create, the, to plan the operations and, and to have, uh, uh, finally, good results of the money which has been spent. We and other development banks have, have quite recently uh, written uh, new uh, strategies to target to this green economy, a market economy where there's a specific concern to minimize the impact of economic activity on the environment and where market failures are addressed through improved policy and legal frameworks aiming at accounting systematically for the inherent value of services provided by nature at managing related risks and at catalyzing innovation. And these are the tools by which we can manage with this very huge problem. There are some, some in, uh, examples how, how this money is spent and we have to scale up these activities to, to reach those targets which are uh, politically decided and uh, it needs actions in every sector of a society, not only uh, states and, and municipalities or local authorities, but also private companies, uh, families, when we uh, renovate our houses or, or uh, flats, so we have to take this very well into concern. And so I mentioned that we, we have to make this kind of new targets to double the business volume to 40% into the screen business uh, operations and uh, in our bank to, to reach 4 billion euros annually and uh, in, during five years or four, four years of 18 billion euros spent in, into this. Uh, one important factor is that uh, we have to have much more cooperation between these different international institutions, development banks and others. And this uh, fact that uh, the political decision makers have been pushed to agree on these uh, new targets uh, has made it uh, necessary to also all, all the international actors to act accordingly. They, they have to have more and more efficient cooperation to have better results of the money we put, put into this. And it's uh, the way we can, as a mankind, solve this very bad problem. And, and Lord McConnell will tell more about it. Thank you for, for this, and maybe if, you ha if there's time for a couple of questions, so I'm re ready to ask. Thank you. Thank you very much, the Honorable Mr. Koskinen. Please, we'd be happy to take questions and comments. As always, if you can raise your hand and briefly introduce yourself, would we appreciate it. We'll start here. Thank you, sir. Uh, a small question comes to my mind. How does EBRD look forward to enhance cooperation with uh, new coming bank, BRICS Bank or something it is called? Yeah. Brazil, Russia, India, China. Because that represents another set of uh, law. So what kind of cooperation do you see there? 
or antagonism, if at all, there may be something. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, hopefully there will be cooperation. This uh, first one, this AIIB Bank, uh, Asian Investment and History Industrial Banks, uh, with that, there is already wide cooperation that uh, they, the Chinese uh, president of the bank has uh, uh, approached to, to the other in, international development banks and has wanted to learn from their experiences and to create much so as efficient as possible organization for the bank. This uh, new development bank is, has uh, not started yet, but I, I assume and I'm quite sure that they follow the same path that they want to, uh, as a new institution, uh, learn from the maybe good practices and also mistakes that uh, the older one has have made. One more question in the front. Uh, first of all, thank you for your uh, wonderful work and speech. And uh, I'm an Egyptian activist. I come from Egypt. Uh, until 15 years ago, uh, the degree, the, the summer would be like around 37 degrees, 38 degrees. We never broke the 40 degrees. Unfortunately, last summer, Egyptians started to die out of heat because we reached the 50 degrees now in Egypt yeah. last summer. So my question to you, sir, with all your efforts and everything that you're doing, are you optimistic? Well, I'm optimistic that we can reach this uh, two degrees target, but now it was written that it could be even 1.5 degrees. That might be too, too optimistic with these uh, capabilities that uh, uh, the nations and, and the common organizations have. But we should reach to, to those very steadily. Uh, and we don't know actually yet how severely already this, what has happened, uh, damages different parts of the world. As you mentioned, in, in some regions there are already uh, from three to four degrees increases in, in the temperature. And uh, from the universe, if you look from above. Uh, so the most, uh, uh, the, the biggest changes have been in the Arctic. Uh, the, the sea coverage has uh, decreased a lot. Also in the Baltic Sea, it's a, a lot uh, shorter period of ice covered in, in the Baltic Sea and much uh, smaller area. And then, of course, some uh, droughts, uh, some lakes have already already dried out. But uh, uh, there will be problems during the next 20, 30 years. But after that, it will be uh, more positive if we really fulfill all the obligations and, and pledges that have been now settled in, in Paris. Thank you very much. We're a little bit short on time, but if you promise to make it a, a quick question and a quick response, we can do one more. Thank you, uh, thank you very much for your fruitful uh, conversation. My name is Iqbal. I come from Afghanistan and working in Brussels. Today was the inauguration of TAPI project, uh, Turkmenistan, Afghanistan, Pakistan, India, um, uh, most uh, huge uh, project in, the uh, in, in, in that region. Uh, what do you think, to what extent it can have a uh, uh, productive uh, uh, outcome uh, for the European Union? How, how the European Union can uh, take advantage from this uh, project? Thank you. Well, uh, Turkmenistan is one of our operation countries. Uh, we are not in Afghanistan, but uh, the other development banks and World Bank are there. So usually in these major uh, construction uh, projects, we try to find uh, uh, private money and not only uh, European Union or, or development banks money and to make a package so that uh, 
the, the total construction work may be done as uh, quickly and as efficiently as possible. Uh, China, of course, uh, has a different tool. They have this huge exchange reserve, so they, they, they may, in one package, often uh, take care of the funding. But now it seems that also China wants to use more these uh, common development banks and not as much straight funding by, by China as, uh, as a state. Well, thank you. Well, on that note, I'd like to take uh, the opportunity for we can all express our sincere gratitude to the Honorable Mr. Johannes Koskinen. Thank you.